Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar merchandise review. This one's going to be my unboxing and review for the Diamond Select Toys Gallery Diorama Katara you know, statue that they're releasing. So this is the second uh, Avatar statue that Diamond Select have released. They did an Aang that came out a bunch of months ago and we now have the Katara as figure number two. And then the third statue coming out, I guess in a couple of weeks, month or two, is uh, Zuko. So that's gonna be really, really exciting when that one comes out and hopefully we'll get like a Toph uh, announced as well. So we have an Earthbender character because uh, a fourth figure would roughly complete the set of Airbender, Waterbender, Firebender, Earthbender. So that would be nice to see. But uh, before we get behind the camera to take a sort of in-depth look as we open this up, because it's a big figure, it's kind of hard to do just like holding it here. We'll just take a kind of more head-on look at the packaging here. So you can see standard sort of style of Diamond Select packaging with the sort of sand colored kind of box, nice windows on all sides, pretty much. Uh, and then the red along the bottom is actually quite nice with the names. So that's cool. On the back, you just have your promo shot of the figure, which is the, a shot that we had since the figure was announced. And in the description, that just says Gallery Diorama Katara, brief description of Avatar. And it says it's uh, based on her appearance in Avatar The Last Airbender, cast in high quality PVC. It features detailed sculpting and paint applications designed by Uriel Catan and sculpted by Salvador Gomez. Um, the final thing I'll say, just like focusing in on this, is that my one um, criticism of this based on uh, the pictures beforehand where it was just that I felt the Katara face uh, that they show and, and the way it looks even in this picture is that they made her face a little bit too round, the cheeks maybe a little bit too full, that it didn't feel super accurate to the show. Now, um, Sculpting on Avatar figures and statues has tended to be the big, you know, topic of discussion. Have they got it right and how many times have they got it right? Um, so that was, that's a big thing that I'm excited to see when we get a closer look at it. Just looking at it through the window here, it looks like I might not have that criticism anymore. It looks like it is slightly different or just that this shot happens to hit it at maybe the exact wrong angle that makes the face look a little bit too uh, kind of full. But um, we'll get that when we open it here. So yeah, I'm gonna get behind the camera and we'll open this up and do the review. Okay, so here we are behind the camera. This is probably gonna be a bit awkward like it was when I unboxed the uh, Aang figure uh, a bunch of months ago. So yeah, there's just a few bits of tape here to open this up. Um, so there we go. Uh, for anyone wondering, uh, the the price of this figure is, uh, it's basically $50, $49.99 plus whatever shipping, depending on where you get it from, of course. Uh, that's the price of this, the Aang, and the Zuko figure coming up. They all have that standard price point, which um, I think is, is, is decent, especially for like Avatar figures, which have tended to be either, you know, pop, Funko Pops, like m m more action figure style figures, or more, much more high-end stuff that costs even more. So I think $50 is actually sort of a reasonable middle ground in terms of the price point. But um, I know some people, you know, obviously when you compare these to like Japanese figures and stuff like that, that probably is maybe where the value, the quality maybe fails a little bit. But in terms of some of the more dynamic posing we've seen in Avatar figures, these uh, <laughs> diorama figures, definitely do a great job. So yeah, there's a few bits of tape here and then we can pull this up to take it out. Okay, we can move the box out of the way here. And, and then you can see what you get is obviously Katara in the plastic. You get the cardboard uh, backing here, which is just to have your sort of uh, avatar kind of uh, wallpaper kind of background and so we'll put this away in the box and then yeah this uh if i on the last one there is some tape is there any tape here e yes there's at least one little bit of tape here and that's 
there we go. So, that opens up. What's going on here? And we'll just get this out of the way. Packaging everywhere. So, here is the statue out of the box. So there's a bit of movement there. Okay, so that's sort of flexible. Um, so this is just a kind of quick take. We'll sort of zoom in a bit. Um, just my initial look at the figure, sort of a little bit up close here. Pretty nice overall. Uh, again, just the detailing on the, the base is fantastic here. Uh, you don't really see this level of detail on the bending effect parts on some of the other like you know what you get with the action figures and so on so to see a really detailed pose here is actually like really really nice um so what's going on here this looks like it's meant to connect into something oh okay so there's a little bit of a yeah just a tab there that this goes into oh yeah yeah that makes sense okay that's cool so that just kind of either was put in place uh like that but yeah just tabs in like so to have the whole kind of ball of water that Katara is sort of uh, generating with her hands there and uh, yeah looking at it here the face definitely looks much better than it does in pictures and um, you know how accurate how it, how much of an attempt is it there to be like super super show accurate there uh, that is up to you but, you know, you compare this to, say, the Diamond Select figures, which, you know, try to be roughly accurate. This, I think, is trying to be a little bit of its own art style with the sculpting. But it's still very much the character. And especially this being, like, this is the only piece of Book 3 Katara in her Book 3 design merchandise that there is. Uh, the Pops have not done a Book 3 Katara. The figures have not yet got around to doing a Book 3 Katara. And... Um, and obviously they never did one during the run of the show in any statue. So this is outside of just like pins and stuff like that. You know, pretty much like the first piece of, you know, Book 3 guitar merchandise. And that is very notable because it's a fantastic, you know, design for guitar from the end of the series. And again, the, the detail on the back is also really nice. So yeah, first impressions so far are excellent. So uh, once again, I'm going to change the camera position uh, just so it's a little bit kind of uh, more uh, normal here um, and we'll take another look. Okay, so let's take a closer up look at this uh, from a better angle. So we'll just do a kind of quick kind of turn around here. So just we can so we can just sort of see this from every angle that you'd sort of sort of see it at if you have it on your shelf. So, you know, the really nice dynamic pose from Katara that they have there. You can see she's bending water both from the uh, water underneath her here into the ball that she's forming in her hands, as well as, you know, she's on a sort of slab of ice that she's just made as a platform in the water. Uh, and it's causing a bit of a kind of waves type of situation to come up. And then interestingly here, you can see the pouches on her back She's bending water out of both of them, which forms this sort of like ring effect around her. So there's actually three streams of water coming into this uh, water ball that she has between her hands. It's a really nice, really dynamic uh, bending pose here. Like they're doing on all of these Diamond Select figures, which is what I like about them so much is that Sure, it would be cool if it was just a sort of standard Katara, just right there with maybe a basic water thing to get across that she's bending. But I love how they've just gone um, like 110% in on, she's a water bender, let's show her doing water bending and a little bit of everything in a way almost that water bending can do. So you've got the sort of, in a way, like whips of water, you're forming a ball out of the water, ice uh, at the same time as everything else. Um, really, really nice. Um, we'll take a, a close up look at the face here, I suppose. Um, so this was the thing I was the most sort of worried about going in, but like I said earlier, I'm not really noticing it in person as having the same effect that it does looking at it in the picture. Um, 
you can tell like the, the the sculpting here and the way they've done the paint applications is that they, they're going for a kind of their own style a little bit with it. They're not trying to be, I suppose, 100% animation accurate. It feels like they're trying to be like 80-85% animation accurate and then the remaining 15% is just like to adapt it to a statue and that it's going to be something that is sculpted and then paint applications have to be done on it uh, to make it look uh, nice in kind of physical form. So I, I like the way they've done that. I actually like the kind of uh, kind of thick lines around her eyes and stuff like that. It's an intense pose and we do see Katara do intense poses sometimes. Um, so I feel it's actually more suited on her versus say like the Ang figure, which I'll bring uh, in front of camera in a minute, which has a sort of relatively stern, angry expression when Aang you don't usually associate as having that expression. So uh, I actually like this one of like book three, it's you know, Katara in action. That is a pose that she would be doing. And then the details on her outfit are just really, really nice. So you've got the water tribe blue and white, very nicely done. You can even see the uh, necklace in there is also nicely sculpted, even though it's like right in the middle under her neck uh, in the middle of everything they still have the details correct even like on the back of her neck underneath all of her hair you can see that they have the details there as well similarly with the painting on her water pouches on the back it's really really accurate and nicely done and then the sort of longer hair Katara here with the uh, her book three hairstyle this is what everyone's sort of been wondering like oh this is this, is, this has some of the same complexities as her book one uh, hairstyle, but now you have the long hair as well to deal with. So they work with it nicely here because of the bending pose that they're going for here. So they have it sort of splayed out like this in the middle of action. But say on like an action figure where they're going to have to have it like down, how are they going to have her head motion work in future figures? That's going to be the interesting thing because because book one Katara and book two of Katara have the the braid which kind of contains all the long hair together. Book three Katara doesn't so and that's the kind of main distinction there with the hairstyle but you can see the uh, the details are quite nice with the sort of uh, the hair loopies uh, still actually being here going into this bit at the back and the same on the other side so that is very nicely detailed. Um, so that's really really cool to see and um, I suppose the other stuff here would just be sort of her arm armor here because obviously this is sort of her battle outfit I like the sort of uh, wrist guards here you can see the kind of uh, sleeveless gloves with a little bit of armor there as well uh, and the same here where you can more see I suppose the underneath of it uh, is really really nice same goes for the kind of uh, the boots she has the sort of shin armor uh, as you can see on the legs as well. So um, overall, just that quick look through, very, very impressed with this figure. So um, I suppose the one thing is that on the bottom, you can see there's nothing fancy going on here. It's just the kind of molding underneath, but it's where you can sort of see how the figure is actually put together. Because they had to mold this base in a way that they can stick this quite complicated structure on the top of it. So you can see they've got the spot for one of her feet sort of goes here. The the kind of base of this kind of main uh, bit of water that's coming off goes here. Um, you can see this water effect part kind of sticks in here and so on. And um, so it's nice to see the sort of construction there on the figure. So let's bring the Aang in so we can have Katang together in statue form. Uh, I might need to alter the angle a little bit here. There we go. So you can see there, they look really nice next to each other. The scale is uh, pretty good. Obviously the difference is that Aang is doing a pose that sort of emphasizes the height, whereas Katara is doing a pose that is more of a wide pose. That's why it maybe looks like they're almost out of scale, but it's just that like they're doing um, you know poses that are kind of very different but still really cool I, I just love the the fact that the bases aren't just standard bases that they are bending effect parts that Ang has this really cool spiral of air underneath him and he's doing a pose that shows 
that bending sort of in motion. Really cool. And then Katara is doing a sort of similar thing, but for uh, water, where she's showing the, the ice, pulling water from underneath her, as well as her pouches. Um, and it's just really, really cool to see the two characters sort of side by side. Um, and so there's kind of different shot there. Um, and you can see like, if you just kind of have them sort of like facing each other, it's, it, it does kind of look cool almost just like as a display there, if they were like sparring against each other in a way or something like that. So uh, yeah, and when, when we get to Zuko, this is also going to be really cool to have the, you know, the blue here, the clear, the red for the fire. And then the top is going to be very interesting to see how they do it because the earth is obviously going to have to be, I guess, a lot of brown or gray, depending on what type of rock or whatever there is they're going to do, and how exactly they showcase that as such. Because you sort of have classic things that you can show off with the other characters of like a, a stream of water, like a whip of water kind of type thing for water, an ice structure, very clear. With air, just anything that shows off the spiraling motions is going to look really nice. But for earth, it's like, do you just show her doing a wall, a big chunk of rock? Um, what's the best way to showcase uh, earth bending? So I, I'm assuming they will do a top at some point because they nailed the, the fire effects on the Zuko that's going to be coming out. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see if they do uh, this for more. And even if they just uh, go for like, say a Sokka, not a bender, but I'm guessing they'll show him in his like book three armor. So we'll have the sword and stuff like that. Um, what sort of uh, extra base type stuff will they have going on with him? Uh, that's going to be another key thing uh, in terms of will they just have a really nice sort of environment looking piece uh, that he's standing on. But so far, two statues in, very impressed with uh, Diamond Select. Uh, in terms of, uh, I've never been a huge statue person particularly. I've always tended to prefer action figures, but these statues and how unique the poses are really are beginning to sort of change my mind a little bit of just like they're really nice representations of the characters and for me like the only real criticism that i'd have on them is just that perhaps the the ang here you can see the face is a little bit probably too stern in terms of the the true representation of ang for me but as i said before we also don't want them to go to this extreme, where it looks scary how wide that grin is. So, you know, some middle ground between these two is what you need for Aang. Um, the Katara, I think, actually works out quite well. And for this aesthetic that they're going for, I quite like what they're doing. So, uh, I do have the Zuko ordered. I ordered it from somewhere else, then I ordered both of these, so I'm not sure when exactly I'll be getting that, but um, I'll do a review when I do get the figure. So uh, that has been the review for the Diamond Select Gallery Diorama Katara figure. So in the comments, if you have any questions about this figure, or you know, just Avatar collecting merchandise in general, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and answer them. But uh, yeah, that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.